Well, as me and Mr. Goat, the talking tennis cat, predicted in yesterday's show that had uh, this this thumbnail. Uh, no one saw that because the French Tennis Federation struck that video down over a BS copyright issue, but we won't get into that. This is Rafa's special day. Let's pick it up from the beginning. And look, you see the little stutter step he does right there? I love that. Uh, look at it from this angle. Rafa, his whole career, he can't step on the lines once he's on the court. Look how he starts stepping on clay here, and he's got a... Can't hit the line as soon as he touches the <laughs> Gotta love Rafa and all the things, uh, all the little weird things he's done over the years. Uh, Rafa got very crunk in the match, as you can see there. That was probably the peak of the excitement. This was one of the best points. And uh, I think a big takeaway here is look at that movement. Obviously, Rafa was getting better and was feeling better. And for me to talk, I don't know it's uh, going to be the, the last time that I'm going to be here in front of all of you. Uh, honestly, I, I am not 100% sure, uh, but if it's, if it's last time, I, I enjoy it. No, the, the crowd have been uh, amazing during the whole week of preparation and today. Uh, yeah, the feelings that I that I have today uh, are difficult to, to describe in in words. But uh, for me, it's so special to feel the love of the people the way that I felt uh, in the place that I love the most. Well put, Rafa Nadal. A uh, lot of respect from his peers. Look at some of his top peers: world number one female, world number one male, and Djokovic, obviously, uh, former world number one, and Carlitos Alcaritos. We're all in attendance at the match today. And uh, the general gist of the match was that, I mean, we could have said it before the match. We can definitely say it now, say it one more time. What a shame that he drew Sasha Zverev, one of the top favorites to win this tournament, in the first round. Uh, in the video I did yesterday, I'm going to try not to repeat a bunch of stuff, but I guess it doesn't matter if I do repeat anything from yesterday because uh, the video didn't make it to prime time. Uh I said a few times, you know, if Zverev could have been like his opponent in the third round, the fourth round, quarterfinals, you could see Rafa working his way further into a form and winning. And uh, a lot of people agreed. Uh, I've seen this all over, but let's go to uh, this is Mats Vilander, a former world number one tennis player himself. Vilander had his share of hot takes, but great perspective just now in saying Rafa beats 90% of players today, while Zverev in those conditions is a worse draw than the current versions of Djokovic or Alcaraz. Good job, Matt. The guy below him says, I think he's right. I just texted a friend that Rafa probably beats 120 of the other players in the draw based on how he played today. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's true. Th these conditions, and this is a big point I made in a video uh, yesterday that never made it because of the French Tennis Federation. Those bastards. Anyway, a point I made over and over again is that I would have, you know, I wanted to pick Rafa to win. Everyone did deep down saying, hey, this is the guy who's going to do it. But the truth is he's dominated all these years at the French Open. And uh, a lot of the big matches that he's won at the French Open had the opposite conditions of what we had today. First off, uh, they closed the roof. It was raining. So it was like an indoor tournament, high humidity, lower temperatures. Uh, slow conditions. I know uh, a lot of people don't understand this, but you know, for years people would say Rafa likes slow conditions. Maybe Rafa doesn't like fast indoor courts, sure, but Rafa on the clay, he wants the clay fast and he wants it sunny and uh, hot outside so that it cooks the clay and the clay plays faster and it's because he wants his ball to bounce higher. Rafa's forehand, it works so much better when it bounces off of the clay as you can see in this clip uh, pinning Holger Runa back with a, you know, a deep ball that also bounces high. That was on Saturday, I think. Uh, that was Roland Garros uh, Kids Day. And uh, unfortunately for Rafi, he didn't have the conditions like that. No, not even close with uh, Zverev today. And that was ultimately the reason why I couldn't pick Rafa. I said, you know, if anyone's going to do it with this terrible draw in the first round, it is Rafa here. But he needs the right conditions. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, I was right. And it turned out that way. Uh, if you don't believe Mats Vlander and all these people saying, yeah, 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 whatever, Rafa would have beat everyone, sure. Uh, let's listen to the guy who just beat him, who is now the third man to ever win. Emotional wise, Rafa very, very difficult. Uh, don't really know how to act in the end. You know, obviously, I'm happy that I won the match. We didn't know but either. 
We don't know whether he's going to be back. I hope he's going to be back because uh, the way he's been improving over the last few months and how he's playing uh, this week, it was it was incredible. I think, you know, if he would have maybe gotten a bit of an easier first round and maybe gotten into the tournament a bit better, maybe, you know, from the third, fourth match onwards, he would have been one of the favorites to win the tournament again. Um, but it is how it is. It's very unfortunate. But it is how it is. It's very unfortunate. And uh, Zverev's obviously happy to get through. But Zverev's right. And I think anyone who says it was right, if Rafa could have just had a little more time to play these best of five set matches, and as long as the body held up, I could have predicted this at the beginning of the year. I probably did during the Australian Open. We saw Rafa briefly right before the Australian Open. He didn't make it all the way to actually uh, play in the tournament itself, but he played a tune-up right before. He looked good, and I said, man, if Rafa can play this, he could win the French. He's just... Can his body hold up? And his body didn't hold up uh, long enough. You know, he was practicing a lot leading up to that Australian Open and looking pretty good. But um, his body didn't hold up enough to even practice. But, you know, it's not all it's not all bad for the Raw fans. And as Rafa said, he's not sure. This might not be his last time. The way he played, he might think, you know, I wasn't healthy enough to prepare the way I wanted to this year at all. But if next year, if I could find, uh, you know, the fitness that I need to, to keep preparing, uh, to, to spend more time in preparation, practice more, basically, play some more real matches uh, going into uh, this big event, then he, he might like his chances. So he's not sure, but none of us are sure. And while we don't know if this is Rafa's last time at the Roland Garros, we do know it was baby Rafa's first time. So that's it. on the bright side. Let's try to make it uh, not so bad. Uh, here's another one. This is probably our best clue that Rafa's not done here. Uh, Amelie Moresmo was asked about Nadal and uh, his request that they don't do like a retirement celebration ceremony after the match. Uh, as you can imagine, she, she said, we had something planned for Rafa, but he wants to leave the door open, so we're not going to push him to do anything. It's his decision when he wants to have a proper ceremony or proper goodbye and proper farewell, so we're not going to do it uh, this year. And then you might have noticed she came right over to Rafa at the end of the match and they were talking to him and they were probably asking him, hey, you're sure you don't want us to, you know, if I, if I press this button, all the balloons are going to come out of the, uh, of the, the roof is going to open and balloons are going to fly in and there's going to be a big Rafa celebration here. And Rafa's like, no, uh, I'm not so sure. Maybe I'd be back next year and you save the balloons for uh, the next year and the big party for uh, Rafa. Thank you. Uh, anyways, here's Rafa himself. Himself talking about the immediate future. As I said before, have been positive week for me, the practice in all of the ways. In terms of physical performance, eh, without a doubt, I feel much better than before. I didn't feel the limitations. Today in the match, the same. I felt I was able to move myself much better than in the previous tournaments. All right, there's enough for Alpha voice. I had a very tough opponent in front, and he played well, I think. Even like this, I had my chances, you know, with the serving. With the serving for it set in the second. <laughs> then again, another 1540 in the third, a breakup, another 1540 in five. Yeah, yeah, Rafa had his chances. He'll probably be a little frustrated about how um, the match ended up. You know, he, he, he could have, it's hard to say he could have won it, but he definitely could have won a set, and that was why I was thinking Rafa loses in four in uh, the video that no one will ever see from yesterday. Uh, anyways, um, we will uh, look at the draw today, but I hope this is not the end for Rafa, but as Rafa said, if it is the end, I'm happy with it. What more can you expect? The guy has done more winning there and less losing than anyone in the history of this sport. So don't feel sad for Rafa. Just uh, have some love for Rafa on this special day. I fell in love con Rafa in Barcelona. Mi corazón es solamente por Rafa. Tú sabes, mi amor es Rafa Nadal. In Barcelona is where I fell in love. The city pass. Made improvements on the backhand. He would stood Rafa's forehand for a set. I used to love his long, luscious locks of hair. It wouldn't last because now I am in love. 
love with Rafa. Quiero leer tus libros, Rafa Nadale. Tocar la guitarra por Rafa en Barcelona. Quiero cantar for Rafa, yes I want to. Si es verdad, I fell in love with Rafa. He fell in love with Rafa. Fell in love solamente con Rafa. Welcome to Coffee Break Tennis. I'm your host, Matt Bradshaw, singer of that classic hit song right here, original tune from Coffee Break Tennis about three years ago. About three years ago, that video was and it applies so much today. You know, uh, being a Federer fan for years, some of the, the worst moments watching tennis for me were because of Rafa beating uh, my, my, my tennis idol, Roger Federer. But I came to love Rafa over the years, and uh, that was when I, when I couldn't hide it anymore. I was truly a Rafa fan, and a Fed fan as well. Uh, but in the last video, we, uh, we talked a lot about this draw being so open. And who will fill the void? Who can win it? Who can take advantage? To be truthfully honest, uh, we, we got some stuff today. Oh my gosh. There we go. We got some stuff today on a uh, center. He looked pretty good this morning playing before Rafa, but it was Chris Eubanks. Um, you know, not the best first round draw, but this is not a place where Eubanks expects to do very well. He's got a big serve, but yeah, that wasn't a problem for center. He wasn't really tested. Uh, same goes for Alcaraz. Their draws are good enough for them to uh, feel their way into the fourth round, which they will then face some tougher competition. Uh, Yari was out. And that, I think that was the main reason my, my video got bounced by um, the French Tennis Federation. I showed a lot of footage of the crowd. and I was talking about how that could be a factor, but honestly, it really wasn't. Not in that way, at least. I showed uh, the crowd was going insane, right? Mute, a French player, tricky French player, was playing uh, Nico Yari, who just was in the finals at Rome, was, uh, you could say, a dark horse favorite, definitely the biggest upset yet in the tournament on the men's side that I can think of. Hubie almost went down. As as usual, Hubie Doobie. I put, I put him in the semifinals of my draw, and he almost loses in the first round. Has to play five sets. Thanks, Hubie. Uh, anyways... Sinner, I was thinking, would meet Nico Yari in round of 16. It could get tested by him big time, but uh, Yari's out first round. Uh, the crowd was going insane, was uh, borderline very disrespectful to uh, Yari. And I said, if the crowd is like this with Rafa, it could get in Zverev's head. Rafa just has to play good enough. If Rafa could bring enough of a level and let the crowd get in the head of Zverev, and there was a moment in the match where Zverev double faulted and it showed Rafa's coaches like laughing, getting like excited. I think maybe they had talked about it like, hey, maybe Zverev will have one of those 20 double fault matches like he used to a few years ago. We'd like that. And then he throws in a double at a bad time and uh, they're all of a sudden they're getting excited. Anyways, um, so Baez now, I think, will, even though he uh, played a close one, had the win in five today. Uh, Baez has been very good on clay. And I think he will be the round of 16 opponent for center. But I don't know if that'll be enough of a test. Hoobie Doobie certainly will in the quarterfinals if Hoobie Doobie can make it. That There's not a lot of big names in there. Uh, Carlos, again, like same thing. It's good enough to see how these guys look in a few month, in a few matches. Anyways, well, we'll, we'll talk about that. I have an article on Sinner saying um, Johnny Mac basically is saying I don't, he doesn't think Sinner is going to be fit enough to do anything here. Uh, it is very wide open. Djokovic... Like, when I look at this draw, I think he's got maybe the best draw of all. Musetti he could face, or Monfils. 
you know, that that could be a little tricky, but Mazzetti's not playing his best, and Monfils isn't either, although you never know with the crowd and Monfils, he could produce a masterpiece maybe in the third round. But it looks like Joker, just like with Sinner and Alcaraz, he has some breathing room, unlike Rafa, to get into the fourth round and uh, then finally be tested Tommy Paul in the case of Djokovic. Uh, Medvedev had a tough battle with Kepfer right before we started doing the show today. Kept me going uh, later than I expected to be prepare, doing uh, show preparations. Anyways, um, Medvedev, winnable uh, matches up ahead, but I think he runs into some trouble maybe with Struffy Struff, and then, of course, Zverev in the quarterfinals could be there. Zverev's draw doesn't look so bad now uh, after beating Rafa in the first round. Uh, let's talk about Sitsipas, though. He's one who can, uh, who can do it, and he looked good today. Uh, first off, him and his girlfriend are back together, so that could be a big factor. Right? We, we don't know about Joker. We don't know about Sinner and Alcaraz, but we do know Zverev and Tsitsipas and uh, throwing Casper Ruud and pff, even our champion of Madrid, Rublev. We know those guys are feeling pretty good on the clay uh, right about now. Uh, but Tsitsipas and Zverev should be the ones that, you know, Casper Ruud should be. But if anyone has to bet on it, who's taking Casper Ruud over them? I don't know. We'll, we'll see as we get further into this draw. Kasparud's going to have to deal with Djokovic, who might be feeling better if he makes it that far. Uh, but Sitsipas, good news on that front. However, the bad news for Sitsipas, his girlfriend is back, but she's not helping him with uh, his outfit. Take a look at this ugly outfit that Sitsipas had on today. I think this, I don't, if you don't remember, some years ago, Zverev and Team and some other guys were wearing um, you know, Adidas stuff. They were wearing uh, zebra outfits. They looked like zebras. Uh, now, now, uh, the first thing I thought when I saw this was, uh, it looks like they pulled, uh, Sits Sitsipas looks like a giant tool bag. Not like, not what you're thinking. I mean, like this, like they look like they pulled Sitsipas out of a DeWalt tool bag. Where was the girlfriend, Paula Bedosa, on that to advise him not to look like that? You know what he also looks like? He could be your next school bus driver. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. And then I had to dig a little deeper. I was like, you know what? They screwed up, Adidas. Uh, they should have made this outfit, not for the French Open, but for the U.S. Open, because he'd fit right in with the New York City taxis. But then, I thought about it a little longer, and it finally hit me. Someone is imitating a bee. Except, this time they're not in the crowd. They're on the center court. Uh, anyways, moving on from that. Uh, on a serious note, before we get into the draw, and we'll look at my article about why Sinner is not going to be able to win here. I mean, you know, it's all speculation. But, hey, here's one for the Joker fans. Uh, I think it was Sitsipas against Kyrgios hit a fan on accident with a ball smacked in frustration, a la Djokovic-style 2020. Sure, it didn't hit a lady in the throat and went... <laughs> and fell on the ground and pretended to be dying. That didn't help Novak Djokovic's case. But Kyrgios said, hey, that should be a default. Bro, bro, that's a default. We're all away, bro. And uh, Sitsipas didn't get defaulted, but now we have another one. Look at this. This happened, I think it was today or late last night, maybe. Uh, so you don't see it, but that ball he smacked just hit a lady in the crowd. Like, not a ball person, not a line judge, but actually, like, a fan. You think maybe that's worse? And then the crowd is uh, starts saying, let him play. So the lady's like, hey, I don't want everyone to hate my guts. Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. And they didn't disqualify him, but um, the opponent was saying, hey, this should be automatic disqualification. Uh, comment down below. What do you think about the standard set in tennis for disqualifications? I know the Joker fans are probably uh, pretty furious seeing that. Anyways, uh, I have my draw here. Before we get into the draw, let's just look. Or you know what? When we get to center, we will read the Johnny Mac article, if I can find it, on uh, on center. Because, uh, you know, a lot of people would have thought, hey, maybe Sinner's going to win all four majors this year, the way things started off for him. Anyways, let's start it at the top. Put it on the screen. I've done pretty well so far with my picks. Uh, Joker, I think he plays tomorrow. Pierre, I, I know he plays tomorrow. I think he will have a very easy time with pierre Hugues Herbert, who um, hasn't been playing much. Uh, I don't know if he's coming off an injury. I know he had, uh, he had a kid recently, I think. Maybe he took a break. You know, maybe did some... Uh, uh, parental leave from uh, the tour. I don't know. But I do know one thing. He hasn't won any matches on clay or hasn't really won any matches all. So that's like the opposite of the Nadal first round draw. Joker gets a very easy one. Um, Carbaez Baena, I think he had one good win on clay, like at the very beginning, you know, back in like February or something. 
Uh, other than that, he hasn't been winning a whole lot. Uh, Monfils came through, as predicted here. Uh, Musetti, by the way, Carbaya's binding hasn't played yet, but that guy, Constant Lestion. Here's a good thing for Joker. This section of the draw, it is amazing. If you look, you know, I've looked at pretty much everyone in this whole draw. Uh, if there was a player I wasn't familiar with or just, you know, someone I, I couldn't remember what kind of results they were having on clay lately. And, uh, and Djokovic's section of the draw, there is an astounding number of players who have this many wins on the clay, or, or like one, like zero, one, or two wins in total for the year on clay. You find a lot of those names all over in Djokovic's section of the draw. Uh, Musetti... Uh, has won his first round. I think Musetti will come through to the third round, but the French crowd, man, we saw what they did to Nico Yari. I mean, they they made it frustrating. It's one point he smacked the ball, not quite, and he smacked it out of the stadium, but he probably would have enjoyed hitting someone in the crowd because they, they were being pretty rude to him. I know it's a French player and it was, a, it was a, you know, a late match, but uh, yeah, they, they wanted blood in that match. I feel like they did most of the work in defeating him, uh, you know, um, Mute was just, you know, he, he just helped a little. Anyways, uh, we'll see what happens with Monfils and uh, Musetti, but uh, I'll say Musetti gets through either way. I like that for Joker. I think that's not a bad third round. And then the uh, test comes with Tommy Paul in the fourth round, it looks like. So we'll we'll learn a lot. You know, I put the question mark there because we want to see. If Joker makes it to the fourth round, obviously he's probably going to feel better than he has all year. He's going to say, hey, I'm starting to find my groove. I'm playing better. And if he can beat Tommy Paul, well, then I think he can beat Kasper Ruud, and I think he can win the whole thing. And that's why I have him ultimately beating Zverev in the semifinal. But, you know, that's it feels far away right now. we got to see. Joker will feel the same way. He's got to see some results come in uh, in these early rounds and feel good again. Uh, Sarundalo, I think, is uh, he leads Tommy Paul. He beat him recently in Madrid. He also beat Zverev. Had a good little run there. Sarundalo could be the opponent. In that fourth round, he's got a 3-2 head-to-head -head against Tommy Paul. He could take that match. You never know. But I do have TP coming through. Uh, I lost on Fonini. That was a bad bet. Uh, Van de Zanschalp has not been playing well for a while now. And um, I just thought, you know, with his game, that he could do well here. And uh, Fonini handled him pretty easily from what I uh, remember of that match. Uh, Tommy Paul comes through. Taylor Fritz hasn't played yet. Dusan Lajevic came through a very tricky one. I... I thought that wouldn't be as close as it was. That was a, a tough match. He fell over on the ground like he won the whole tournament after he won it in the fifth set. Uh, late night. Only finished before Medvedev's wild match tonight with uh, Dominic Kepfer, which, um, oh, we'll get to that part of the draw in a little bit. Uh, do, 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 do. You know, a lot of these guys haven't played yet in this uh, top half of the draw, or, or, um, Joker's half, so not much to talk about there. I, I like, obviously, Rude coming through. I think his draw isn't to, uh, so bad. I mean, it's pretty good until he gets to... Maybe Fritz. That should be pretty winnable for Root, although Fritz is playing better on clay. And then running into Joker, you know, that's that's never fun, no matter how he's playing that year. Uh, Zverev comes through. Rafa, obviously. Greek Spore could be a little tricky. Uh, I think this Impeshi Pericar guy, uh, he just won in Lyon. I think he comes out over David Goffin. He has a, a sweet one-handed backhand. I'd put the clip in and show you, but um, well, you know what? Let's do that. Take a look at this backhand. From uh, Impeshi Pericard, uh, a French guy who just won in Lyon. Uh, nice to see a young guy with, with a sweet one-hander like that. So, hey, I'm rooting for him, but I don't think he'll be uh, any trouble for Zverev. Hachinov, maybe. You know, Holger Rune could come through there. This Medvedevich guy is pretty good. But uh, I think zverev Kachinov could be a tough match, but I'm, I like Zverev. He comes through over here. You know, not a bad draw for Medvedev. Kepfer can be tough. I remember it's been three years. It was a very similar match late at night. I think maybe they closed the roof, but the humidity was going up. The temperature was dropping and conditions were getting slower. And it was Federer. It was one of Federer's last matches uh, on, the, on the tour. Uh, I think it maybe was his last match at the French Open because I think uh, he made the quarters after that. Or maybe maybe he played Chilich. I can't remember if he played Chilich before or after. But uh, I think he beat Chilich in a pretty wild match and made the quarters and then said, I'm pulling out and saving it for Wimbledon. Where he lost in the quarters to um, to uh, Hoobie Doobie, of course. Uh, anyway, so it, it kind of reminded me of that match. <clears throat> As conditions got uh, slower and colder, Kepfer was able to blast through that ball, was playing very consistent, playing a big game. 
And uh, Federer had to get very creative to come through that match. And Medvedev, uh, uh, same thing, saw a lot of um, interesting points. At one point, Medvedev had to run and and hit a, a slice forehand around the net post, like in between the net post and the umpire's chair. He had to get pretty crafty, a lot of drop shots. And uh, a, a really impressive match, actually, for Medvedev because it, it looked like he was having to push himself really harder, hard as the conditions slowed down. Uh, Pablo Carreño, Busto! We haven't said that in a while. He's been gone. He had to have a surgery last year. He tried to just take a break from the tour and get healthy and play, and then he decided he can't. He needs surgery. Had a surgery. He is making his return now, just like Nisha Corey did. Nisha Corey won a five-setter the other day. He goes up two sets to love. He loses two sets in a row. He's getting treated by the trainer for what looked like a back injury. And, you know, even I caught myself thinking, like, all right, Nisha Corey, you came back early this year where you were immediately injured in one match. Now you're back again. You're injured again. Like, how how long is this guy going to try? But you know what? Rafa deserves it. They all deserve it. You know, if, if they've made enough money from tennis to keep trying to make it, keep trying to, you know, get back to what their their level used to be, they earned the right, I think. Uh, we go to the bottom half of the draw. Uh, Struffy Struff, I think, is a little dangerous for Medvedev in uh, that section, but I, I have him coming through. We'll see the conditions. Struffy Struff in the slow conditions probably would beat him. Uh, Struffy Struff won in Germany. Um, beat who did he beat? Oh, he beat Holger Rune like 6-1, 6-0 or something. He crushed him. And uh, it was snowing at one point at that tur tournament in Munich. So um, we know that uh, Struff likes to play on slow conditions with all that power. Anyways, uh, Rublev, another guy who can rip through any conditions. Get him coming through. Uh, all the way to Sitsipas. Sitsipas, the human school bus. I th I think Sitsipas should win that. I think Sitsipas will like his chances to win this whole tournament. Uh, his draw is not so bad. Altmaier could be tricky in the next round. Uh, Carlos. I thought maybe Draper could be a little tricky with his big potential to play very big, but he lost to Jesper De Jonga, which um. I should not have made that pick. I picked Jack Draper to win because he's got a big game. But Jesper DeLonga, he's a Dutch guy from the Nederlands. And uh, I, I shouldn't underestimate how much the Dutch hate young British men. And I think that's because, you know, they come to Amsterdam. They get wasted. They, they smoke the, uh, the green stuff that's legal there. And they do, you know, general jackassery, tomfoolery. And uh, the Dutch, they hate it. They're sick of it. And so, of course, Jesper DeLonga... Jesper de Jong, yeah, drink your water, don't give hell. He, uh, he, he took the guy out because he hates British people, obviously. So I made a big mistake there. Even with my uh, awareness of European cultures, I should have called that one. Corda could be tricky. He can play a big game. Shelton obviously can play a very big game, and he's getting more and more comfortable on the clay. So little tests there for Carlos, but I would think he should like his chances, even if he's not 100% with the, the forearm. Uh, coming through there until Steph. Big question mark there because that's when we'll find out what kind of shape are you really in. And um, uh, hit the music because we're going to get out of here in a little bit. But with that said, uh, Hoobie Doobie almost blew it. Almost lost to Mochizuki. Shintaro Mochizuki. Good job, Hoobie Doobie. Uh, without any more um, disasters like that, he should come through and face Yonic Sinner whose draw has opened up now that Yari is out. Baez maybe could be there. Maybe Gasquet or Stan, the man. Nori is out. Maybe uh, Stan, the man, or Gasquet. Maybe an old guy with a one-handed... Uh, maybe a French-speaking older gentleman with a one-handed backhand will be able to test center. I don't think so. Let's go to Johnny Mack on center. He hasn't done the ideal preparation. John McEnroe questions Yannick Center's fitness ahead of the French Open. John McEnroe has expressed doubts about the physical condition of Yannick Sinner, the Italian who debuted at the French Open with a win, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Seven-time Grand Slam champion commented that the current French Open is the most open it has been in years, providing a good opportunity for several players. McEnroe is skeptical about Sinner's preparation. I doubt Yannick is 100%. He hasn't done the ideal preparation and wanted to play more matches to have the chance to arrive ready in Paris, he said. I think this is the most open tournament in recent years, especially with uncertainty that affects many of the top players. It's quite exciting from a commentator's point of view 
Uh, I'm sure it's stressful for the players, especially top players. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Joker's stress. Obviously, if everyone was healthy, you would have three or four big favorites, the former World number one added, so at least it opens the door for other players who would normally think they have a chance. One goes slam, that's where t- top player, blah, blah, blah. All right, so you get it. Um, as far as Sinner has, has said, questions about his fitness seem to be the main concern for Sinner. He commented on Media Day this, I can't work miracles. I haven't played tennis for about three weeks, which is a long time before Grand Slam. I try to play day in and day out. This is a little different approach in the tournament than in the past because hopefully advancing to the first round will help me find my rhythm. My rhythm. But when you look at this draw, wrong side, when you look at this side of the draw, uh, it, it looks open enough for center to where he should be able to get that practice that he hasn't had for the last three weeks and survive. Maybe the French crowd plus Gasquet gives him a challenge, but I think this is very nice. A looking draw, you know, I'd probably rather play Gasquet or Stan than Corda, even though I don't think a whole lot of Corda. You know, I'd probably play, uh, I'd, I definitely would rather play Jesper de Younga. Well, who knows? You know, unknown. Uh, it's going to be interesting. As John McEnroe said, I'm excited. I think everyone should be pretty excited. Yeah, I'm very sad. Took a lot out of me uh, emotionally to watch uh, Rafa today and to prep all this stuff. You know, we're so used to celebrating Rafa winning and uh, how special what he's done has been at the French Open. Uh, so we're going to we're gonna call it today, but I am very excited even without our favorites. Even if Joker is uh, not feeling his best, maybe he goes down early too. I think it will be interesting to see what happens in this tournament. And uh, we'll be there every step of the way with you if the French Federation doesn't ban any more of my videos. See ya!